Hi everyone, so I've noticed recently that a lot of people, both male and female, are moving away from their twin flames um, and moving away from karmics as well. And I just wanted to take a little bit to explain that, you know, it's your path. And if that's what's right for you, if that's what resonates with you, you know, go with that. I just, I think a lot of people have this idea in their head that if they don't end up with their twin flame, that's like they're only one person and they're going to end up alone if they're not with their twin flame. But that's not really the case. You have multiple potential life partners. So I wanted to take a little bit to discuss that and then do some readings um, do you know a couple spreads here for you guys for those of you that are um, in that energy of, of giving up on somebody that you love you know you're kind of realizing it's time to move on to better things you're realizing that there's better people out there for you um, I wanted to just to go into that a little bit with you guys and of course you know being a soulmate and twin flame channel primarily I always want to encourage union, but there there comes a point where it's just not really worth it. And I know some of you are in that energy where it's just, it's no longer worth it to you, you know, and I understand your frustration because I do these readings and, you know, you probably watch other readers who get the same things that I'm getting, like they're thinking about you, they're missing you. Um, and, you know, I think for a lot of you, yeah, you should hold space for them. But if it's if you've been doing this for years and years and it's just the same story again and again, that's when it's like you got to consider other options. You know what I mean? For those of you that just kind of have this repeating cycle with them, basically. You know, I always want to give you guys hope and I always want to tell you guys the truth. I always want to channel whatever the masculines or feminines are feeling in my videos. Um whatever the situation might be, I'm going to tell you what energy I pick up, honestly. Um, and I really do feel like Twin Flame um, and even Soulmate Union is at hand. I feel like this is a potent time for it. There's a lot of energy shifts that have been taking place in 2020, a lot of purging and cleansing. So if you feel that you really are finally there, like it feels different than before, like you really do feel like you're finally close to that union, you're getting some sort of contact, or you're getting dream synchronicity, then, you know, follow your intuition. But there's, there's, I feel like there's two main energy groups right now. Um, so for those of you that are still on this twin flame or soulmate journey or whatever it is, you know, I think that you're probably resonating a lot with my videos, but I think there's also some of you that are kind of just, um, just at that point where you're, you're ready to move on to something else. You've noticed that you've been going in circles with this person, that it's a roller coaster with this person. And I just want to say like, you're not going to end up alone if you decide to let your twin flame go. I mean, you're not necessarily going to end up alone unless that's your path, unless that's what you want, you know, but your twin flame isn't your, your be all and end all. And even with, you know, my soulmate videos and twin flame videos, um, I do want to give you guys hope if you are choosing to, you know, hold on to this, to, if, if you've been in this pattern and you are choosing to hold on, I do want to give you guys hope and tell you guys the truth. But I also want to explain that there is an energetic difference between, waiting for somebody like putting your life on hold for them and just holding space for them and you can kind of be aware of that energetic difference when you're waiting for somebody it's like the energy just feels depressing lonely heavy stagnant it's like you might um just obsess over what they're doing you might be you know kind of checking up on, up on them frequently worrying about who they're doing what they're with but you know, the difference is when you're holding space for them, it's like, yeah, you might watch videos here and there on them. You might, you know, kind of follow, follow up with what's going on with them a little bit, you know, check in, check ins and whatnot, but you're still living your life. You're still pursuing your career. You're still trying to meet your goals. You're not thinking, you know, oh, I can do this when I have my person with me or I can only do that, you know, I can only do this when they come back. I got to wait for them to come back before I make this move to a new city or a new state or I have to wait for them to come back before I can focus on my career or whatnot, you know, and it's like that's that's when you're if you're if you're wait, that's when you know you're waiting for them. You know what I mean? Holding space is a very energetic difference where it's like. You just allow them this safe space where it's like if they want to come back, they can. But if they don't want to, you, you know, you're open to other potential life partners coming in too. 
it's like holding this energetic space where it's like they can kind of come and go free freely you know like if they want to come back and stay they can do that but if the universe has something better in store for you then you're open to that too and you know you're living your life either way and you're just letting things flow to you you're just you're focusing on the things that you love your your hobbies your passion your career whatever makes you happy and I think that's the kind of energy that that invites love in when you're just doing your own thing. And of course, you should still send them healing energy. But if your if your twin flame or soulmate is going through the dark night of the soul, which many of them are right now, you don't have to go on that roller coaster with them. You know what I mean? With all the ups and downs, them, you know, messing with your head, being in one minute out the next, you don't have to go through that roller coaster with them. You can just hold space for them. You can send them healing energy but you can still put yourself first. And it's not selfish to put yourself first. A lot of empaths have that difficulty. Um, so I'm saying, you know, it's okay for you to put yourself first. And I'll get to the, the reading in just a minute for those of you that need some advice on this. And I'm just putting this out there. You know, like I said, I'm going to keep being a soulmate and twin flame, flame channel. I'm going to keep channeling and telling you what the story is. But if you've been dragged through the mud for through, for years with this person, just, you know, roller coaster, just pain, heartbreak, loneliness, rejection again and again, the same cycle with this person, you know, at a certain point, you either have to move on or you got to do things differently, you know, approach, approach it differently with a new perspective, new communications, um, setting boundaries with them, staying in your power and not letting them take your power away from you. You know, and like I said, yeah, I'm a twin flame soulmate channel, so I'm going to keep doing the readings. But again, intuitively, it's up to you at any time. If you say, you know what, this is going in circles and it has been for a long time. I want off this merry-go-round. I want something new. And the beautiful thing is that, you know, for the groups I'm channeling, like if you're resonating with these soulmate twin flame readings that I've been posting, um, you know, it's possible that we'll all just shift into um, channeling a new person. You know, it's it's possible that, you know, with it, with with you guys consistently watching, that, you know, in the coming months, we might actually have new energy in these readings. We might have, because I'm already kind of seeing that in some of these readings where you guys have multiple potential life partners, where it's like we are channeling the, the person that you've been with, that you've been waiting for, that, you know, this situation that you've been in, an ex, whatever the situation might be, you know, somebody missing you. I've, I think the last one I did was someone, um, them um, being support, like feeling supported and loved just by your angelic energy, by your patience. But, you know, this is this is your story to write. You can you can shift that energy at any time, you know. For some, it might take longer than others, but, you know, I might be channeling these soulmates on Twin Flames, and then more and more frequently, I feel like I'm going to start getting the energy of a, of a new person coming in here. And eventually, we might just be moving on to this new person, you know. Maybe I'll channel a little bit of the old person, but I feel like we're, I feel like a lot of you are kind of transitioning into the new right now. And this is either, you know, finally having that um, second chance with your person, or it's just altogether a new person coming in. It's just new energy. I feel like collectively, that's what we're going towards. So I just want to tell you guys that, you know, like you guys write your own story. You You intuitively decide what you're willing to tolerate and not tolerate. And I know a lot of twin flame readers, you know, kind of convince you guys like, oh, if you're not with your twin flame, you're going to be alone. Like this is like the only person for you. This is your only true love. And I just want to say that's not true. Like we, we can collectively invite new love in. We can invite new people in. You have multiple potential life partners. So twin flames are basically... How it works from what I know is you have a soul group, which is soulmates. Those are people that you've incarnated with in your past lives. It's just the same energy as you almost. It's just like the same soul group. You know, you guys always kind of stick together. You guys always find each other in your lives. Sometimes, sometimes you know, a couple of them might stay in the higher realms while you're down here. But, you know, you guys always end up together you always gravitate back towards each other you're you're a family basically think of it as just as a family um except it's forever it's not just one lifetime it's just it's forever it's 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 your soul group you know like you guys find each other and there's usually soul recognition with soulmates as well like you might have um you know like a strong psychic 
tele- uh, telepathic connection, uh, them coming through in dreams. So it's basically of just kind of feeling like at home with them, like you just you've known them forever. There's just this. It's it kind of I think that's like what love at first sight is too with soulmates. It's like you just kind of have that that knowing when you see them. It's like you just you feel familiar. You feel like you've known them for thousands of years, and that's why some people meet their soul one of their soulmates and they think they're crazy because they fall for them within like a week or two. But the reality is like you've known them for hundreds or thousands of years, so that's why you're falling for them so quickly. You guys are just kind of picking up right where you left off. You know that's how I always explain love at first sight. And then you have twin flames, which are, so basically, so there's a soul group, and then each soul from that soul group is taken and split into two, a masculine and feminine side. And there there are gay um, twin flames, and there are lesbian twin flames. It's just, anyone could be in that masculine energy and the feminine er- energy. It doesn't necessarily have to mean male and female. But that's what a twin flame is. It's one soul that's separated into two bodies. So you guys are constantly mirroring each other, constantly picking up on each other's thoughts. It's the strongest connection you'll ever have. You know, it is similar to a soulmate connection. Other from what I've seen, uh, twin flame connections, like when you find your twin flame, you it usually triggers a really drastic awakening process. You know, I think soulmates can trigger the awakening process too, but like with twin flames, it's intense. It's like... You might think you're going crazy at first. You might start channeling. You might start connecting with spirits. You just, it's, it, twin flames mark a before and after period in your life. It's a very, very intense connection. But I just, you know, to to get back to the point, a lot of people choose not to be with their twin flames this lifetime, you know, and you guys will see each other again in other lives. It's not like if you choose to go down a different path, that's okay because you don't want to spend years and years of your life waiting for somebody. You know, if you can live your life and hold space for them, that's great. But if you find yourself on this merry-go-round cycle, eventually you have to do what you need to do to get off that merry-go-round. And twin flame relationships can be very destructive because you're mirroring each other. So all your flaws, all your negativity is all mirrored back to them and vice versa. So sometimes you see things in them that you don't like about yourself and they see the same in you. And so those those relationships can be really chaotic and toxic and they're they're great. There's huge potential for growth there, but sometimes people just choose not to end up with their twin flame. Sometimes it's just too toxic and it can take twins. I think I think it can take twins, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of years, you know, it can take quite a few lifetimes for them to get it right. You know, I think it's with older souls. I think those are like the twin, the twins that are reuniting, I think are mostly older souls. So I think in like the beginning stages of the twin flame connection, that kind of energy is just so just chaotic. You know, I think it, it takes a while to get to that point where you can just fully embrace and accept your twin and have them do the same for you. So, and I just want to, and again, you know, even if you are an old soul, you can still, it could still be chaotic with your twin. It doesn't mean that you're a young soul just because it's chaotic, you know, those, I think those connections are always just, they're intense, you know, and yes, there's a lot of passion there, but there's also some negativity there a lot of the time too. And now I just want to put it out that, that you have multiple potential life partners, you know, some people aren't, some people don't even plan to be with their twin flame. They might plan to meet them this lifetime, but some people already have one or two soulmates that they've chosen to be their life partner. And, and soulmates, in my opinion, I think they often probably do make better life partners just because that connection is still strong. It's still very deep. It's still very emotional and spiritual. You still have the psychic connection there, but, you know, just a little bit less chaos there and a little bit more understanding and more empathy for each other. And from what I know, you do have more than one potential life partner. So even whether it's, a, it's soulmates or twin flames or whatever, it's like if you were, are with, if you're going around in circles and, you know, someone predicted this was your life partner and this was the person you're going to end up with, but it's just the same shit over and over with them, you, you can move on. You can let them go at a certain point if you feel like it's just not changing and you can open yourself up to the universe and just say, hey, I want... I want a life partner who's who's going to be more of an energetic match for me, somebody who's going to step up for me, somebody who's going to be supportive of me. You know, you can write down these affirmations. You can write down and visualize what you want in a partner. 
Um, you can do magic, love drawing magic to bring this to you. Just word it as if you have it, whether it's, you know, a vision board or it's spell work or whatever kind of energy work you're doing. You just want to word it and feel as if you have it in the present moment. So really think about their qualities. If you're lighting a candle or you're doing visual, visualization, you know, picture them in the room with you, holding you as you light the candle. Picture what it would, you know, feel those feelings of having it now. Um, word it as if you have it now. Like gratitude really helps manifest to just being thankful for having it now. Just put it in the present moment because that's what's going to manifest it in the present moment. If you say someday or eventually, then you're constantly making it just out of reach, just a little bit out of reach from you. So you want to really word it as if it's happening and really feel it as if it's happening in the present moment for you. And I'm just putting this out there too because I I've, I've over the years I've fallen in love with way too many cowards like I I had this man a few years ago that you know was predicted to be my life partner and and it wasn't a real relationship it was just me obsessing you know just me fantasizing me thinking about what could be but I want a relationship where I'm gonna you know have someone here physically with me where I'm gonna have someone to physically talk to like the, the telepathic connection, the dreams, the synchronicity, it's all beautiful, but it's not enough in the long run. You know what I mean? Like if that's all you've had for a long time, it's just, it's not enough at a certain point. And I regret that I let myself get stuck in that pattern with these emotionally unavailable men, you know, repeating those patterns of, of chasing after people and thinking eventually they'll be here, eventually they'll be here and just going around and around in circles and then eventually, you know, you realize it's just like a fantasy. It's not a real relationship. I'm not able to talk to them physically. I'm not able. They're not over here with me. We're not going on cute little dates. It's just potential. You know what I mean? And if it, at a certain point, if that potential doesn't blossom, then it, it's, you know, you have to decide if it's really right to keep going in circles or you have to do things differently, you know, take it like take a new approach, setting boundaries, doing things differently but you know it's like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results and that man was just a soulmate that was um, predicted to be a life partner before that I had my twin flame that was predicted to be a life partner as well and you know he did black magic on me and he convinced everyone around him that I was doing it um he was an incredibly toxic manipulative person and I'm, I'm glad that I moved on from that. I'm glad that I let go of that. I'm glad that I realized that I don't deserve that anymore. You know, and I'm glad that I got out of that mentality of, oh, he's my twin flame, so he's the only one for me. I'm like, you know what? Somebody who's this toxic, somebody who's this negative and manipulative isn't the one for me. They're just not. You know, I took charge of my destiny and I'm like, you know what? That's not the energy that I want in my life. There's other people out there who are a million times better for me and I finally let my own twin flame go and that's another hard lesson for empaths to learn is that you know it doesn't just matter who somebody is on a soul level like they can be absolutely amazing deep down um but you have to consider you know we're in physical form here and you really just have to consider what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis you have to consider their actions and their words and their energy towards you on a daily basis? How do they act towards you when they're not in love with you? On those periods, like a lot of you, like with your exes, you're like, oh, they treated me like a queen or like a king when we were together. But okay, how are they treating you now though? What energy are they presenting to you now? You know, how do they treat women when they're not in love with them? What's their relationship like with their mother or father? Like you got to look into those things. You have to take everything into account. You got to take the whole picture into account. You have to let go of, of how things could be um, or how things used to be. And, you know, not just, you, I mean, it, the soul level is important. Like you do want to know who somebody is on a deep soul level, but you really have to take the day-to-day, -day, their day-to-day -day energy and actions and behavior into account. You have to see the entire picture and, take the rose colored glasses off and then make your decision from there. And I was just really drawn to make this video because I'm thinking, I've been thinking lately about, you know, I'm trying to manifest true love in my life right now too. I'm in that stage and I'm thinking about all, just all the cowards that I've loved, all these, these men that I've loved in the past that have just been afraid of 
my mind, afraid of my heart, afraid of my body, afraid of my soul, just afraid of every part of me, just not able or not willing to understand me, not willing to step up and, and do the work for a relationship with me. And I just, I just so deeply regret wasting, wasting so much energy on these cowards. I really do. And so I really want to help other people, both women and men too, break that cycle. You know, it's kind of like, I mean, with this channel, it's kind of like I learn and grow with you guys too. You know, I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing your stories and, you know, we're all just kind of collectively getting through this energy together. And, you know, I have the probably third soulmate that's been predicted to be a life partner in the past few years that I'm, I'm kind of talking to now. And I just basically told him off, um, and that was the first time I wanted to share that kind of sense of freedom I got from finally breaking that pattern, you know, finally, I've, I, in the past, I've always made excuses like, oh, there's a third party situation. So I've got to do spell work to help them get out of that third party situation or, but you got to realize like they're choosing the other girl though, or they're choosing the other guy, you know what I mean? They have free will. Um, or, you know, I've always made the excuse like, oh, they're just afraid they're damaged, but I'm like, you know what? I'm afraid and I'm damaged. Like, I have my own depression and anxiety and my own, like, mental health issues that I'm working through. And so that fear and that anxiety that they have isn't really an excuse. It's just, it's not an excuse. And if they're not taking your own, your fear and your anxieties and your own health, mental, physical and mental health issues into consideration, then it's like, it's not worth it, you know? Like we always make that excuse. Like I feel like a lot of people I, I hear that they're they're afraid, they're damaged, but it's like everybody's afraid. Everybody's had their heart broken multiple times. Like this is a rough world that we live in. At this point in time, there's just there's nobody out there that isn't damaged. And people have to decide who and what is worth the risk to them, you know? And if a guy tells me he's afraid or he's, he's, you know, he's running or he's doing this, I'm like, I'm going to let him run. He can run far the fuck away from me. I don't have the patience for it. You know, and I kind of see it. If a guy is saying, you know, if a guy is showing me all this fear, I kind of take it as he's, you know, that he's willing to hurt me in order to protect himself from this imaginary threat of me hurting him. Like, it's, it's a coward move because they're basically saying, like, I'm okay with hurting you just as long as I make sure that I don't ever get hurt by you. And I'm not trying to date a coward. I don't know about you guys. I don't have the patience for cowards. I want a real man by my side. I want somebody who's brave, somebody who's in touch with their emotions, somebody who's going to claim me on all levels, somebody who's going to be sure about me. That is what I want. That is what all of us deserve. And I think I'm going through this energy right now. Like I think it's it's you know divine timing that I'm I'm that I started my YouTube channel at this time. You know that I'm I'm doing these readings now because I think I'm going through this energy so I can intuitively look at the patterns and kind of see what's going on. It's like we're all getting through it together. So it's happening to me so I can show you guys how to get out of that energy yourselves. You know, we're all just kind of going through this together. We're all learning through this together. And sorry, I, I keep, I, when I channel, I kind of, there's a lot of info that comes in at once. My guy, it's just kind of poured on me. So I have to step back and try to get back on point. But I'm, I'm talking to us. So I, what I was originally saying, I'm talking to a soulmate now that's predicted to be a life partner. Um, and I do love him. I really love him. But, you know, I love myself more. I do. I love myself more. I, I know that I know what I want in a man. I know that I want somebody who's going to step up for me. I want somebody who's going to be brave. I want somebody who's not just going to put themselves first and not just going to put their own, not going to, I want somebody who's, it's okay to be afraid, but I want somebody who's going to be brave enough to push past their fear because everybody's afraid. So I just, I don't want to hear the excuses anymore, you know? Like I want somebody who's just in their power, somebody who's just completely sure of me. And, you know, he's been making excuses. Some of his excuses are straight up lies. Like, he'll actually just lie to me. He'll he'll just come up with stupid shit just because he doesn't like being called out. And, you know, I got to the point where I was just like, you know, I'm done with this. Like, you can either step up and you can give me what I deserve or you can move on out. 
but I know what I deserve and I'm not going to settle for less than that. I'm not going to listen to any more excuses. Like I just, I put that energy in the universe too, that you know what? I don't have the patience for, for weak, timid, scared men anymore. I just, I don't, I just, I don't have the energy for it anymore. I don't have the energy to baby men anymore. I, I want a real man. And you know, affirming that to the universe and just making that conscious decision and, and you, when you, when you word things with the universe, you probably don't want to say, oh, I don't want this. I don't want that. Cause you're attracting more of what you don't want. Like you do want to say, Hey, I want this in a man. I want this in a man. I know what I deserve, you know, self-love affirmations, that kind of thing. You want to, you want to really focus on the things that you do want. You want to focus on the kind of man that you want to visual, that you want to manifest. I think that's what invites that new energy. And that's a big part of manifestation. But I just want to say that I felt a huge energy shift. Because in the past, I would always just make excuses. It's like, oh, he's scared or he's going through this or that. And I would just hold on to any little breadcrumbs that they would give me. Just any little tiny bit of hope. Like, oh, we haven't talked in two weeks, but you sent me a message and asked how my day was. Oh my God, I'm going to obsess over this for the next week. And then you'll go MIA again and then eventually you'll message me again. And it's like just holding on to that little bit of hope. And this was the first time where I was like just so just so done with that energy, just so turned off by his excuses, so turned off by that pattern that I've been in, that I'm to the point where my feelings are just dying for him more and more each day. And if he doesn't do something intense, like drastic soon, I'm probably going to be over it completely in about a week. Like I'm at that point. And yeah, I just, I felt a huge energy shift because that was the first time when I was actually willing to let it go. When I said, I was a bitch when I messaged him and I was like, I was, I straight up told him he was being cowardly, you know? And it was like the first time where I wasn't like obsessing over my words. Like, oh, what if I say this wrong and he doesn't want me back? I'm like, okay, well he can, he can go then, you know? Like it was the first time where I just kind of just completely, not just sort of stroke my truth, kind of you know, hinted around and tried to set some boundaries. It was the first time where I was like firm in my boundaries where I was like, no more excuses, no matter what, like totally willing, a hundred percent willing for him to ignore me, for him to tell me off, for him to block me, for him to do whatever. Like I just did not care what he did at that point. Um, cause whatever he does is going to show me if he blocks me, if he moves on, that shows me he's not right for me. And my guides are going to bring someone a million times better into my life. And I know that. And that was just, I felt like I just wanted to share that with you guys because I feel such a huge energy shift. I know a lot of you are kind of in that. Um, a lot of us, like a lot of people have that pattern of emotionally unavailable people. and, And at a certain point you have to work on breaking that pattern. I'm, you know, a hundred times further along than where I was years ago, but I'm, I still have work to go. You know what I mean? Like I attract better men, but it's still a process. It's still just a matter of, of putting myself first and, and knowing what I deserve and, and setting boundaries and just being willing to tell people goodbye if they're not willing to, 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 you know, match my energy. It's just, but I, I just, I felt a huge energy shift when I just, when I really stepped in that, into that energy where I was just completely just turned off, just willing to let him go if he can't step up, um, not obsessing or being afraid of his reaction, just, just complete faith in the universe. Like, you know what, if this person isn't meant for me, then go ahead and take them away and please bring me someone better instead. Bring me somebody who's who's, you know, sticking to that. Like, I know what I deserve and I'm not going to settle for less than it. So I, I, if this isn't for me, then please just remove this from my life and, and manifest a real man who's going to give me the love and the attention and the, um, the honesty and communication that I'm looking for in a relationship, you know? And just, I just felt a breakthrough with that energy, just just being willing to stand in my power like that, being willing to let somebody go, and just be alone until the universe brings me the right person. I just, I felt a huge um, energy shift. So I think that really is a big key for maybe some of you in, in if you have this pattern as well. And, and breaking that pattern is just kind of faith in the universe and just, you know, 
an unwillingness to tolerate less than you deserve. So sorry I've been blabbing so much. Let me pull some cards for you really quick before I end it. Okay. Okay. Surrender to your intuition. So tune in to your inner voice. Be aware of any gut feelings, flashes, knowings, or all hall moments that come through to guide you. So yeah, I think most of you, if it's time for you to let go of somebody, you intuitively know that the energy is shifting away from them. So don't fight the current, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just not worth it. Sometimes you have to take the lesson and you have to um, you'll look back and realize that you, you're, you'll be glad you didn't end up with this person if this is your story, you know, like, don't, don't waste time on cowards. Just don't like, I, I, like I said in this video, you know, I regret all the years that I wasted on cowards. I wish that I had stood in my power and, and set those boundaries and, and told men like that off sooner. You know, I think I would have manifested my true love way. I probably would be with him right now if I had if I had done that sooner instead of, you know, holding on to different men for years and years, even after they rejected me and were never around for me. You know, it's just not worth it. Um, so, yeah, and there's also with this, I want to say there's also red flags. Usually it's not like people always think like, oh, like I, I thought that was my true love or I thought this was that or that. But honestly, there's usually red flags. Like there's usually like gut feelings like in your body or there's just like negative synchronicity almost where it's like you, you see numbers that kind of tell you, Hey, you should let this person go. Or you hear conversations or songs that are kind of like, Hey, you need to move on from this person. This isn't for you. You don't want this. There's more to them behind the surface that you haven't seen. It's not going to be worth it long term. So, you know, your guides do warn you. They really do. The red flags are there. People just usually choose to ignore them. Surrender to excess to success. You are ready to experience abundance. So you're ready for true love. You you got to step out of this pattern. You know, those of you that are collectively resonating with this, it's like we're in the same energy, which is why I can help you so much through this, you know, because I understand it. Don't look back at previous roadblocks or difficulties. Leap into an exciting new world of possibilities, it says. So, I think that's also for those of you that are like repeating patterns. Um, if you're just tired of with love in general, it's like you just keep repeating patterns of like, oh, I attract this type of person or like, oh, men are this, men are that. It's like, let go of that, kind of clear that energy out and step into this new energy, you know, tell like start start a different story now, you know, and and use your creative creativity to start that new story. This is, you know, this is like a vision board or, or affirmations, visualizations. Let your imagination soar, it says. Stay open to all creative ideas about how to pursue a dream or solve a problem. So this is higher thinking. This is your higher self. This is seeing the bigger picture. This is getting into this universal flow of abundance. This is be creative about visualizing who you want and and don't settle for anything less. You know what I mean? Like, just imagine what they would feel like. Imagine the qualities they would have. You can write those down. You can do spell work. You can do energy work, affirmations, vision boards, whatever um, resonates with you. Again, just, just word it and feel it as if you have it in the present moment. Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. So limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Let go of those, and then you can own your power and soar in your life, it says. So... Yeah, outdated beliefs are also relationship beliefs. Like, oh, I, I'm only attracted to this type of man or I only attract this type of man or um, if I let my twin flame go, I'm going to be alone. This is the only person for me or, um, you know, men are this or women are this or that. It's like any outdated beliefs about relationships or about like yourself when it comes to these relationships, it's like try to let go of that and step into change. You've got this white horse. A horse could be your spirit animal too. You know, surrender your fear of change. The universe is reminding you that you are cared for always, whether you're afraid of a change in your job, your health, or a relationship, or if you feel if you fear aging or death. Repeat their affirmation that I have faith that all is well. So it's letting go of the toxic people in your life, be it a lover, a twin flame, a soulmate, be it family, be it toxic friends. It's it's sort it's letting the toxic people go, cutting that energy out and opening yourself up to to better people you know to changing these patterns so that you can have the change that you desire in your life you know if you've been stagnant stuck going in the same circles it's like it's time to move forward and push yourself out of that stagnation surrender stubbornness 
If you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance about something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you communicate more lovingly with others and with yourself. So, yeah, again, it's like, no, well, it's noticing your body's intuition for one thing, how you tense up around certain people, but surrendering stubbornness is, is true. Sometimes, like, if you've been fighting for somebody for a while, sometimes, like, you know the relationship is dead, but you just feel like you put too much into it and you're afraid you're never going to love again if you let them go, but you have to realize you're wasting more and more energy by staying, and if you let them go, if you're intuitively drawn to let them go, you can finally focus on your healing instead of wasting even more energy on this person. Yeah, surrender. That's funny that we got this card. Surrender unhealthy relationships. <laughs> Let go of relationships that don't serve you, including unavailable or toxic people. So I want to say something too that that ghosting is toxic. A lot of people like don't see it that way, but you know, ghosting and ignoring someone, kind of just not being mindful of their feelings. Um, leaving them on red all the time, you know, it, it, it's, and to me, it's toxic. I don't have the patience for it. I know some people do. Some people, you know, will say, oh, you know, people have their own lives, but they do. But it's like, I don't have the room in my life for unavailable people. You know what I mean? I'm, I want people in my life that are going to want to spend time with me, that are going to want to check up on me, that are going to want to know what's going on with me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people in my life that go a month without talking to me. I just, I don't have the patience for that personally. And you have the right to decide that that's not what you want anymore, that you want people that are consistent. You have the right. You don't owe anybody an explanation. You have the right to cut out people that are toxic and negative and emotionally unavailable. And it's all, honestly, it's up to you what you feel is toxic for you because what's toxic for me might not be toxic for you and vice versa. You might have certain triggers and you might have people in your life that that set those triggers off and it's you can cut them out if you want to. It's up to you. It's your life. You get to decide who you let into your world, you know, and you deserve to be treasured by others and be surrounded by positive people. So there we go. <laughs> I hope this helps you guys. Um, and I will be doing some soulmate and twin flame reading shortly here, probably probably within the next couple days, maybe tonight if I feel up for it, I'm not sure. But, um, and again, ultimately it's up to you, you know, hopefully we can even get into a new story because I have been picking up the energy of new people coming in. So let's, I'm, I'll be interested to see what we get in the next reading. If that energy comes through, you know, cause I think a lot of you are in that same energy where you're, you love somebody, but you're, you're, you're realizing it's time to end this pattern for good. It's time to be with somebody who's more than you could have ever imagined. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And if this resonates, please subscribe. Oh, and also if you want a private reading, my information is below. Just send me an email.